Mr. Chairman, a National Public Radio Morning Edition story on forced abortion and involuntary sterilization in the People's Republic of China last year ended this way, and I quote, China's victims are angry and they want their voices heard. NPR was reporting on several cases of forced abortion. One of those, Wei Ling Rong, who was in the story, was seven months pregnant when 10 family planning officials visited her home on April 16, 2007. Quote, if you don't go to the hospital to abort, we will carry you. I was scared, Wei told NPR. The hospital was full of women who had been brought in forcibly. There wasn't a single spare bed. The family planning people said forced abortions and forced sterilizations were both being carried out. We saw women being pulled in one by one. Wei said after they killed her baby, quote, the nurses dealt with the body like it was rubbish. They wrapped it in a black plastic bag and threw it in the trash. Another woman, Hei Kaigen, nine months pregnant, said family planning officials turned up at her house and told her that even though this was her first child, remember it's a one child per couple policy, she had to have an abortion because she was unmarried and too young. As the State Department reported just a few weeks ago, it is illegal in almost all provinces for a single woman to bear a child. She told NPR that after the forced abortion, her boyfriend left her, she was in great physical pain, and that her life had been ruined. Chinese victims are angry, Mr. Chairman, as NPR notes, and they want their voices heard. Several times in the past, the Congress has taken serious and sustained action to convey our solidarity with Chinese women and men who are forcibly sterilized, and of course, for the children, the victims of this one child per couple policy. I would point out to my colleagues that right where uh, Mark Sinis and Laura Rush are sitting, we have heard from victims, women who had been forcibly aborted and were the lucky ones who came here for asylum. One woman told us how she had found a, an abandoned baby girl, scooped that baby girl up, only to have the family planning cadre saying, that's your one, you have to be aborted, because she was carrying a child and she was sadly forcibly aborted. We heard from Mrs. Gao who told us she ran a family planning program in Fujian province, that by day I was a, a, a monster, a wife and mother at night, and said that even at nine months gestation, she would hunt down, she and her cadres, and forcibly abort women at her family planning clinic in Fujian province. My amendment seeks to bring some additional focus on the barbaric, cruel, and hideous crime of coerced population control in China. With its heavy reliance on forced abortion, involuntary sterilization, ruinous fines for, quote, illegal children. The policy is in effect since 1979, continues to be one of the greatest and gravest continuous crimes against humanity in human history. China's one child per couple policy has made, in most cases, brothers and sisters illegal. Remember that if you watch the opening ceremonies of the Olympics or watch the Chinese athletes, anyone under 30 is likely to be a survivor of this one child per couple policy and are very likely to have no brothers or sisters. China's coercive population control program has imposed unspeakable violence, pain, and humiliation on hundreds of millions of Chinese women, many of whom suffer lifelong depression as a consequence. Massively violated by the state, it is no wonder more women commit suicide in China than anywhere else in the world. As a direct result of the government's policy, tens of millions of girls are today missing due to sex selection abortions, creating a huge gender disparity. The lost girls of China is genocide, it is gendercide. The lost girls of China, and in one estimate puts it as high as 100 million missing girls, has also become a magnet for other human rights abuses, like human sex trafficking, which will only get worse as this disparity is felt through the population. One Chinese demographer has said that by 2020, 40 million Chinese men will be unable to marry because of the lost girls in China. They're simply not there. Finally, a couple of months ago, the world was moved with compassion and concern over the loss of life in Sichuan earthquake. The AP and other news outlets, however, seized on the loss of children in the poorly constructed schools most of whom were the only children of the government's uh, because of the government's policy. Many of the mothers rebelled and demanded permission to give birth again, and the government says it might allow some to do so. 
The only problem, most of those women were sterilized against their will or under grave duress, which poses significant problems how to, un how to undo the coerced sterilizations. China's victims are angry and they want their voices heard. Finally, the legislation or the amendment also speaks to the issue, the second